Hi everyone, I'm Jay. I am the Managing Director of Launch, paid media agency for ambitious advertisers. And I am Jill and I work for the Colouring In department where I focus on all things to do with measurement uh, and data visualisation and all the squishy good stuff of marketing. Amazing. And today we are going to be talking all about GA4. So the most important question, Jill, what is GA4? Yes, it's been um, it's been quite quite a thing this last uh, this last month. It's been, got everybody aware of it. So if you didn't know about GA4, you certainly do now uh, because Google has been very busy sending emails to all of you to say, by the way, uh, we're here and we're we're coming quite quickly. So GA4 was actually announced all the way back in October 2020. Uh, so nearly two years in where they've been saying dual tag, get ready. I know it's gone fast, hasn't it? And for a number of reasons, they are really pushing the adoption of GA4 because uh, the universal analytics as we know it is going to be burnt with fire next year from the 1st of July. So uh, GA4 is essentially the fourth version of their analytics platform. And as Jay knows, I've got a nice way of explaining the, the differences uh, over the years. So if we do think of analytics as a mode of transportation, then when it started back in the day, 2005, uh, it would have been a bike. And we were all happy because some of us remember what it was like to track before we had the bike and we were delighted. Then we got an upgrade. We got our scooter, our moped, and that was our classic analytics. Then we moved on to 20. 12 where we have our universal analytics which in in transport talk would be a car and we are all really familiar with the car we know how to drive a car we're a passenger in the car some of us have slightly better serviced cars than others and GA4 is the fourth version of their analytics and it's it's like saying it's a helicopter so whilst there are similarities between GA3 and GA4 it's a car and a helicopter so it is a completely different model it's a completely different way of looking at analytics and there's some stuff that we can do in GA4 that the car just cannot do so whilst it's very exciting and there's, there's a lot of change and change uh, brings lots of opportunities quite rightly for a lot of people because we've had the pandemic you know that raging thing that's been going on for two years uh, so quite a few people are not ready for the change and I think what Google have done in the past they gave us quite a lot of time didn't they Jay it was like oh you've got years to do this it's fine go at your own pace and now they've gone no nope, next year first of July uh, the car won't work anymore we're not servicing the car nobody's doing anything we're all on the helicopter so now mass panic worry what do I do what's happening um th that's where a lot of people are right now aren't they it's uh, I mean it's such yeah. a it's such an opportunity, though, isn't it? It's an opportunity for businesses to take their data more seriously, for making sure that it's compliant, first of yeah. all, that they are uh, c correctly uh, uh, deploying cookies onto people's devices um, compliantly. But, but also, I mean, between you and I, we have looked at more dodgy Google Analytics accounts than yeah. we can shake a stick at. Very, very nice line of work. <laughs> You know, so many businesses haven't got it right. They're, they're perhaps looking at their Google Analytics like it's a source of truth when actually there'll be a lot of data hygiene issues. That's that's yeah. the kind of polite way of putting it. I, so I now is an opportunity. I love it. Like I, I lovingly refer to that that number soup as a, as a kind of confabulations of data, the lies you tell honestly, because you don't know what you don't know. But if the collection and configuration is not correct, then when the data is processed, what we see in our report is lying to you. It's not correct. Mm -hmm. It might be misattributing your marketing channels. It might be giving you some dodgy data. Uh, it could be absolutely wonderful, as you said, but um, I think that th there's a lot of questions that have come around in discovery calls that I've been having with people about analytics and GA4. And I'll always ask questions like, what do you get from the data? Like, what's the what does it mean to you to have really good data? And if you don't do anything with this migration, because it's happening Happening, whether you like it or not um what do you do with the data and if people were answering honestly and going we look at it when we're bored on a friday yeah. or i just get a report from the agency and we kind of just go with that um then you've got to go through that hygiene to go would you like to be more data focused because it yeah. isn't the be all and all of marketing you still need to have the 
the the um the art part of it don't you the the usability the content the the messaging all that has to work yeah but I don't think we can get away with not reporting on what we've been doing and giving something tangible to the very nebulous things that we do in marketing yeah. and the that's business- where and say, business... well, it's a completely different model. Let's take this as an opportunity to exactly. really refine what we're doing and, and get some of the good stuff that we you didn't even know you couldn't even do with a car if you never looked at it. So well, and, and the business really needs to be able to to take stock of, of what data are they holding, are they collecting? I mean, today is is Earth Day, um, mm. and and realize that there is also a carbon footprint. For, for that data that they're collecting, that, that some of this is an opportunity not to collect every single piece of data, yeah. but actually only the data that's going to tell you the story that is going to help you make better business decisions, putting yeah. customers at the heart of what you do. So it, it's, it's, a, it's a moment to take stock. I think, though, your transport analogy is brilliant because also if we suddenly all want to fly a helicopter, mm-hmm. we need a license to fly a helicopter and we also need a better infrastructure of where are we going to charge the, or refuel the helicopter. You know, there are, we're not, the world is not ready for a mass helicopter movement. And, no. um, you know, Shopify, you know, how do you deploy GA4 effectively in Shopify? That That's actually, you know, I've seen conversations on Twitter and threads of, you know, there's a lot of marketeers out there, business owners, agencies, who are struggling to work out how do we make these platforms work within GA4 when actually then they're not ready for it. Yeah. It's tough. Um, I mean, clearly you absolutely love measurement. You know, what, what, <laughs> what is it that GA4 gives you the opportunity to do better or, or, or you the opportunity, but also the businesses that you work with to do better? So I think when, when we start looking at analytics from measurement objectives so whenever I do an audit or ever I do any um, measurement strategies it is always worth going back to those um, why should you care and what are you going to do with the data and only collecting what you need like I I agree with you on the previous point that just because you can collect it doesn't mean you should collect it if you're not going to be using it what I what I do like about data though is is in any form it it gives you a kind of blueprint of what could be built and what where you're going to be going for things uh, and there are some things we can do in the helicopter that we can't really do in the car uh, and some of my favorite things one of them has been audiences so provided you've collected the right events and you've got your head around the data model which is which is quite simple when you when you do really uh, get your head around it um events and audiences for me are the star of GA4 and I think I could talk about it all day long unlike audiences in the car where you might be just using them for your paid media we can use audiences in the helicopter for our paid media but we can also use it as part of our analysis and we can do two things that came out I think in January this year one is add time elements to our audiences so for the first time you could say Uh, let's build an audience where the steps are they went on this campaign page and five minutes later they converted and I can build an audience now and that could be used in the paid media side but I could create that audience to build a new event and if I can build an event I can build a conversion with the event count we can now have multiple steps multiple layers of these events that we're counting so you can now say show me people that bought twice in the last 14 days or people that read five blog posts in the last 30 days and signed up to the webinar. So there's there's things we can do, there's questions we can answer in GA4 that the car would never be able to give us or the 360 version, the sports car of Universal Analytics could never give us. So I think there's a real opportunity to to look at the the options of this data model to give us much, much richer questions and and, and answers to, to all of our marketing. And then superpower is to use that in your paid media. So I would love to build an audience to go, who spends more than the average person um, and does it really quickly? Hello, media team, can you buy me more people like this? Because there are really good customers. Yeah, I put money on that. Like, it's awesome. So obviously the job of actually migrating and doing it, but it is so worth it when you get to the end. Absolutely, because you don't need to market to the entire world. You know, segmented marketing is is the power of 
Yeah, and they always said that, didn't they? Like, find your best customers, and then you just end up sitting in all of this data, and you're like, okay, I've got it. Now, what do I do with it? And it's like, no, work outwork your competition. It's been a phrase I use a lot with with my clients and students. The the end of the day, we are just trying to work stuff out faster than the competitor, and just you need to be one percent better, and you you can be at the the forefront of that that industry and we are going into a pretty difficult year aren't we like the next year mm. any industry we are all facing challenges with the cost of living and, and supply chain issues the fallout from covid you absolutely have to be on your game I think because it is going to be tricky it's not going to be a year like any year I mean I've been doing this for a long time now um this is it's a it's been a weird couple of years and years that I'm, I'm sure you were the same none of us ever thought we'd be living and working through a pandemic never mind all the other stuff that's going on um I think it, it shows that we do need to be working a little bit smarter not necessarily yeah. harder just smarter um so that we can maintain that traction and keep our head above water I think there's a lot of marketeers who are going, well, I just want to take what I'm doing in universe analytics and just move it over to GA4. Is that a thing? Uh, yes and no. <laughs> so um, there are, depending on what you're doing, I guess. I mean, as you know, we, we've, we've done some work together and I have a, a phased approach because I think if you're doing anything, you, you've got a long list, but you don't have to do everything in one go. So phase one for me is getting getting ready for the, the core configuration, the baseline stuff. So doing that, if your answer to your questions was um, how many people came to the website and what content are they looking at, then yes, you can do a, 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 a not an apples for apples, a car to helicopter analysis, apples to pears kind of thing. Um, other bits, then you may need to get some additional configuration in order to get that data. So it's a, a very woolly, it depends answer. I think there are definitely going to be some adjustments for people that it doesn't it doesn't look and feel like a car. And I think that's the one thing with GA4. We can't expect it to be a clone of universal analytics because it isn't. It's, it is a completely different model. Um, and as I said, if you've ever I mean, I've never sat in a helicopter, even though I, I use this analogy all the time. Um, but you would sit there and be like, well, where's the where's the steering wheel? Oh, you've got a joystick now. Well, where's that? Oh, that's over here. And that's there. You will familiarize yourself quite quickly when you've been using it. And then you'd be like, God, I can't believe I've been driving a car all this time and I could have been flying a helicopter. Yeah. It is just being kind to yourself and um, and learning it and, and developing those skill sets and getting what you need out of it. So you, you can do an almost like for like. You just need to learn where it is. Um, and that's the bit that I think a few people are, you know, quite rightly. Well, we all fear change, don't we? We fear change. Yeah. Um, I mean, you are the most excited person I know in the measurement <laughs> world, in the data <laughs> world. What what particularly excites you about GA4? What is it opening doors to that, you know, we've talked, you talked about the audiences, how you can enhance yeah. that. What other little kind of um, tricks or ways that we're opening up our kind of world of me measurement? So one of the things that I really like um, that I've, I've done for a few few clients is deploying in the exploration report. So in GA4, you've got lots of standard aggregate reports. So how do people find your website? What did they do? What did they read? That kind of thing. And then in the exploration area, that's where you'll do more of the analysis, more of the really fun, complicated stuff. And we can now build uh, funnels and we've always been able to build funnels in the car but there there were some limitations to it and all the really good fun funnels uh, if that's a thing fun funnels um, we're in GA360 and we now get the funnels that were in 360 so for me and clients that would never pay the six figures although yeah. there's rooms it's going to be reduced it's still a lot of money that people just don't have a budget line for yet so we are getting access to the kind of tools and analysis that the big boys and girls have and I think that's a massive win for businesses. And with these reports, you can apply them retroactively. So I'm not too worried about, you know, do we need to learn how to build these reports, get the data being collected? And then six months from now, you can learn how to build those reports because it will be applied retroactively. Um, but I love the fact that we can add elapsed time as, a, as an option in these funnels. So not only do we get to see what's happening from start to finish of that journey, we can see how long it takes people to do something. And, and that sort of insight, to turn around to people that never had this data before to say one we can now tell you 
uh, what people are doing and apply it retroactively so we're not missing out on anything if we if we're late building it but I can now tell you how long it takes people to do the thing you want them to do and before you were guessing you were doing expensive UX tests that kind of thing it's really powerful to turn around to people and go there's a four day window between this and this right thinking hats what strategies yeah. and tactics can we do to get the cash in the business faster or get the leads in the business faster and that is really powerful and you just yeah. we can't do that in the past as much as i love funnels in in universal and the and the reports you can get in uh, e-commerce you can't do this and yeah. and things like that I'm like what a win for businesses to to get access to that and and it's a pet peeve of mine that that this um you know you talked about like a line in the budget and it and mm. you know the world of attribution where oh paid has contributed this organic has contributed this email has contributed it's one customer it's one customer where all yeah. of those can play a part in the touch point it's not paid has contributed x amount it you know that that more kind of holistic view of yeah. how how do you gain a customer and all of the different ways that that you can kind of encourage them through the funnel um, yeah. it, it it what do you think it will encourage marketing departments to work together rather than in silos of different departments so what's really nice about what you've just said is it, it's it's just prompted me to think that the way ga4 processes data is slightly different to the car. And one of the things with the aggregate acquisition data in GA4 is you've got two reports. One of them is user acquisition and one of them is uh, traffic acquisition. Now the user acquisition is actually new user acquisition and that attribution model is first touch. So we've now got a report that's like, show me all the brand new customers and brand new visitors that came to the website. And what was the first touch point that got them there in the first place? And we've not really seen that before. It's always been whoever scored the goal gets all the glory. And you're like, what yes. about these over here? Like they have a role. It's like, no, no, you get no credit at all. Like maybe later, but you, oh, you're all wonderful. Yes. And then the traffic acquisition is showing all of your sessions and that's more your last touch. So I think I think some of the challenges that we have um, which will be be focused on in a, in a lot of conversations and content over the, the next 12 months, I'm sure, about attribution and cookies and conversions and, and all that lot. Um, there is definitely a shift away from how we've known and reported on in the past, where it has always been so structured that Google decided it was this attribution model and, and you can't change it, that we now have platforms that are emerging and not just GA4, other platforms yeah. are emerging on the market where we can be a little bit fairer with how we are showing um, you know, the fairness of our marketing channels. And the default channel groupings in GA4 are also different. There are now 16 additional classifications. So we now have not just if it was CPC, it's all paid search, yes. which we all think is Google Ads. That could be paid shopping, it could be paid social, it could be paid video. There's so much more to our marketing than just category CPC paid search. So this yeah. additional classification that we have in the default channel groupings of GA4, I think will also help identify where our marketing strategies are, are working for us because it's, it's a bit wider and almost a bit more up to date with what we've been doing because, I mean, how long has paid social been around? And it's oh, always no. you know, trying to unpick it from the reports is a is a, a ball ache, you know? So know. Well, because we always use the, the medium CPC and yeah, there it goes into into a search like, campaign oh, it's oh, actually and it just means because we're all having to learn this this um this, you know a new platform it mm -hmm. does give other platforms an opportunity to get in are there yeah. any who are the competitors to to ga4 so at the moment i i would predict and i've actually not said this number on a recording yet so we'll see if my predictions i've, I've either i've either got this totally wrong or totally right i i believe that when you look at everybody that is using google analytics at the moment I don't think it's for everybody. Um, mm -hmm. So whilst it's a case of, yes, I talk about GA4 and I'm doing lots of migrations and lots of training, it is not necessarily the right fit for everybody. And I think we could see anything up to maybe 10 million users move away from Google Analytics and just look at GA4 and go, mm -hmm. No, I just no. I haven't got the time because they actually don't need all of the stuff that comes with it. For the businesses that just want to know, do you know what? Did I have some visitors on the website? Did the phone ring? Did people come through the door? They're not really spending a lot of money on their marketing. 
they're they're still in that very early stages then the investment to learn GA4 to get the tracking right to be using it you're not going to be using half the stuff and you do just want to know basic numbers then you can move over to platforms that are very similar to the car so I say if, if universal analytics was a was an auto car then yeah. some of your competitors might feel like driving a stick like driving with a gear it's very you know it's a bit like oh it's not quite the same but it's nearly there um so there's there's people like plausible there's fathom um I think the segment there's there's one for Pewick, and I think it's called Maximomo. I'm used to yes. calling it Pewick, and it's called something else, which I can't. My dyslexic brain won't let me remember and say that phrase. Uh, so forgive me, former Pewick, now rebranded as Max, Max, Max. You can find out later. <laughs> um, they look and feel a lot like um, what you've had before. And for some people, you know, paying, and it will be a paid thing, we are moving towards paid analytics. Yes. It might be five to ten dollars a month for you to access that, but if that's all you want and need, because you are spending a very limited amount of money um, on your marketing, do what's best for you and your business. Like you don't yeah. have to do GA4 just because everybody's going migrate. It might not be the right choice for you. I think if you are in a in a category of business where you are spending money on staff and you are spending money on SEO and paid search and paid social and digital PR and you know you're getting in there and you're growing and you're growing quite rapidly I think the other tools you're going to miss out on the stuff that you can do in GA4 because Google loves a Google product right so yeah. Google GA4 uh, works really lovely with with Google Ads and the stuff we can do there is is just sweet and it's just wonderful and I love it um, and you won't get that from the other providers so I think for the businesses that are investing you have a migration plan uh, to to think about and it may mean that some of you get really big which is a good problem uh, to think about is it going to be a paid option do you go to Adobe do you go to GA4 360 so I think that there's, there's going to be a, a, a road junction here where do you stay on the road and have a similar car or do you go off on the field and go off in a helicopter and both require a decision to be made provided you're going to do something with that information because I would still say you know if, if you never look at the reports and you just go I think the weather's going in this direction don't even bother spending ten dollars a month on it just go with yes. your gut that's what's working for you um because you're not going to use it it's a waste yeah. of time i don't like waste i think you should focus on that smarter thing work on what works for you and yeah. for some businesses um that they're going to leave especially if it's not yeah especially if it's not been accurate you know yeah, i think they're going to look at it and go oh don't go person that never pays for anything don't oh that's a <laughs> name and then move the servers <laughs> over for big query and whatever yeah, they're just like, oh, like, <laughs> we don't actually mind, I don't think, because they're, they're on their next phase of growth, aren't they? So they're, they're Absolutely, doing Absolutely, yeah. So next month, it is very exciting because yeah. we're going to see each other in person, IRL. We're going to no. actually do this. And we're having an event at, um, at the Engine Shed in Bristol. Um, on the 11th of May and you're going to come along and talk all about GA4 um, what little gems might uh, might people be interested in so in the time that I've got because honestly I could just go on and on and on <laughs> so I'll stay for as long as I can to talk to people and just keep feeding me cake and I'll, I'll just keep going um, and <laughs> the main focus of the talk though I think we've called it the, the Marmite migration uh, love it or hate it because there is some there's some positive and negative feelings that go along with this change. So we're going to focus more on, you know, high level, what is the data model and what are the things that you really need to kind of know off the bat straight away. And then if we are thinking about that migration plan, what jobs do you really need to focus on and in what order? Because there is a list to do, but you don't have to do absolutely everything today. But there is still a process to go with that. So we'll talk about that. Uh, and if there's time, we can talk about some of my favorite things and, and, and put them out there to go stick with it, people, because you get to do some amazing stuff at the end of the day. Um, so yeah, hopefully by the end of the, the talk, people will have a better understanding of uh, the difference between the car and the helicopter and what their to-do list is. So they can go back to the office the next day to go, I'm a bit clearer about where we're going and what we need to do. And then you can take it from there. My, my uh, kind of visualization of the of, of, of what's going to happen in, you know, what is it July next year? Yeah. Is, is this car, is this analytics car going into the sunset? Because they, they yeah. use the term sunsetting and it's, you know, that it's going to be going off Thelma and Louise off a cliff. I mean, it, it, I love that you, you've got the optimism. <laughs> <laughs> like, 
I, I see it more as creaking into July <laughs> and it's on fire because it's just I'm not <laughs> like the real time reports have stopped working. And Google's response was, yeah, there's a bug. Uh, we're not fixing it. If you want real time, mm. go to GA4. Uh, so I think with, with a lot of this, that um, it would be nice that the car we love had such a romantic ending. But I don't, I don't know if it's going to be so so nice. It, so we'll see what happens next year, if it's a complete uh, car fire or if it is a, <laughs> a complete Delvin Louise. We'll see what happens. Got, got all of its wheels propped up <laughs> on bricks, maybe. Exactly. Maybe a bit more like that. Um, Jill, it is always a pleasure to talk to you. I literally could talk to you all day. Thank you so much for coming on with us today. And I can't wait to see you next month.